Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial from Tech Cruise. This is Poxy, and first of all, I'd like to apologize to all our viewers. I am so freaking sorry that I haven't been posting for the last couple of days. If you guys have been following me, you already know that my mic has kind of been a pain in the ass, so it always dies on me and leaves and clutters all my uploading schedule. And what happened was a couple of days ago, it actually died on me while recording the weekly tech news. So I haven't uploaded that video either because it doesn't even have sound on the half of it. So so with that said guys let's just get into our tutorial and in the previous tutorial I told you about Armitage and MSF Venom. I'm going to be teaching you about MSF Venom a lot more in this video tutorial. I personally don't use Armitage a lot. Armitage is actually a good tool uh, but it has its downfall, it has its values. So actually I don't use it uh, very often so I am not going to make more videos on Armitage. I like my good old command line. So. We've got our command line and <laughs> I was prepping for this video. <laughs> so let me just clear this out and in this video tutorial like I said guys I'm gonna be teaching about MSF Venom. So MSF Venom what it actually does is that MSF Venom is actually a payload generator. It will generate payloads for different operating systems. So MSF Venom can be called uh, from MSF con either from MSF console that I have up and running over here and uh, or from the command line directly. So if we type in MSF Venom and wow I got that right on the first try this time. Nice. So we see all the different options available to us. I'm just gonna explain you a couple of these. So dash P designates the Metasploit payload we want to use. Dash E designates the encoder we want to use. Now a thing about encoder is that uh, MSF Venom guys is actually a combination of MSF payload and msf encode in the previous a uh, uh, couple of years later what we used to do was we generate uh, we used to generate our uh, payload with msf payload and we used to encode our payload uh, through a combination of both these commands and uh, to be honest it was kind of clunky and it uh, wasn't user friendly at all so what rapid7 did was rapid7 being the company uh, that owns metasploit uh, apparently so what they did was they just uh, uh, got rid of both these commands, they gave us MSF Venom and it is actually quite nice and what encoder does is that antivirus companies, to, we use encoders to evade antivirus because they always check for signatures and uh, what happens is that when you use an encoder they just uh, see that oh this signature doesn't me meet the virus signature so this must be a nice software so I'm just gonna let it be. So this doesn't alert the user but uh, antivirus system has, uh, antivirus companies have gotten a little smarter and when I say little I mean very little. So what they do now is they also check for the template that is often used by Metasploit. So don't worry about that because uh, there are often a lot of ways to get around uh, even what do you say malware bytes and uh, antiviruses. And trust me guys I have written some scripts uh, some programs that can evade antivirus or malware bytes any day any week any year. So trust me I'm going to show you how to code those as well and uh, let's get on with it. So uh, dash A designates the architecture we want to use default is 32 bit dash S designates the maximum size of the payload. You obviously want to do that because when you're binding your payload with a file such as uh, uh, a document or something like that you don't want to send a 50 MB document so uh, you guys have to use dash s sometimes and dash i designate the number of iterations with which the encode uh, with which to encode the payload dash x designates a custom executable file uh, to use as a template so uh, what you guys want to do is type in msf venom and dash l encoders i am really bad at spelling trust me that's why i spell like a toddler so these are all the uh, encoders that are available for us and these will come in really handy in the later tutorials i'm going to show you guys all the things so uh, let's just clear this out and uh, uh, let's see if i have my vm up and running so okay i have my vm up and running guys i have installed windows 7 and apparently this was the software that i was trying to test it did work and <laughs> that just makes you suspicious but uh, to truth be told it did work anyways uh what this does uh, okay wh uh, whatever the hell am i saying uh if you guys don't know how to uh, get your own VM up and running. I suggest you guys watch my other video tutorial. A link will be in the video description uh, and you guys will get to have uh, your own ISO. I have uh, that link as well and if you guys don't have an ISO you can use that and it will show you how to install uh, the 
proper operating system and let's just type in okay it's already cleared out so let's just type in msf venom and dash p if you guys remember we have uh, uh, dash p designates the payload that we want to use so if you go over here and i have my exploit up and running you know what i'm just going to start it from the very beginning and clear this out so type in msf console and hit enter this will start metasploit now i have already told you guys over and over again before starting metasploit you have to start a particular service it's called service post gray sql and start this is the particular service that you guys have to start before starting the metasploit to know why just see my video tutorials before and i will leave the comment uh, i will leave the link in the video description so if you do that and i have to type banner again to see what's up and okay so these are all the number of payloads that are available to at 471 payloads and obviously there are more uh, available online you can always write your own in ruby which the metasploit is actually written in python whatever you guys want to use so feel free and i'm just going to clear this out and type in show payloads so these will show you all the 471 payloads that are available to you and i am pretty sure these are ordered alphabetically so we've got windows we've got asa os x we've got linux cmd bsd x android etc so we've got all sorts of uh, okay come on come on yeah so we've got all sorts of uh, payloads uh, over here so you guys can use any of them so i'm just going to clear this out and i'm going to use what i use mostly for teaching my friends or my students so i'm just going to go and type in uh, windows did i spell that right nope <laughs> windows slash meta predator and reverse tcp okay which directory i'm in okay i'm in the home directory nice so this uh, will actually uh, select this particular payload as a, okay this option will determine which payload you have to generate uh, now what you guys can do is um, set your ip address where it has to connect to so let's just go to this tab okay guys if you don't know how to open up tabs just hold ctrl shift and press t so i'm just gonna get my ip address which is apparently this and uh, paste it hit this and uh, l port this is the port you guys want this particular exploit to listen to and there is some noise in the street i hope you guys are not getting that because it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> so let's just uh, okay what should i use in this 6x oh god damn it my numlock 6646 this should do and let's just write it okay i have my caps lock on as trouble.exe this should work because that one was personally coded <laughs> so i'm just going to use a couple of more options so this should make uh, the explanation of options a little bit clearer so we're going to type dash x which if you guys remember is for ah uh, you know i can't even ask you do you guys remember that and you guys you just can uh, instantaneously answer me so this uh, designates a custom executable uh, what do you say template so this we are going to use a particular template uh, what should i use okay i'm going to use use a share we are going to this particular directory and i should really stop pointing uh, fingers at my screen and we're going to use this one so and dash e for encoder and x86 uh, dash i this is the number of iterations dash f e x e this is the format and uh, we're gonna generate this as chess dot e x e and hit enter this should generate a payload for us with chess.exe name and invalid payload selected oh come on what did i spell wrong metapreda reverse tcp this oh god i should really take some spelling classes <laughs> when d o w s slash okay meta p r a t r reverse tcp and hit enter this should generate one come on come on come on error undefined method data store nil class oh come on just, just freaking work okay hit enter no such file or directory come on 
okay you know what to hell with this msf venom uh dash p windows slash meta pr pre tr reverse tcp i'm just gonna type in my local host ip address and trust me i am so freaking embarrassed right now it was okay come on 192 168.0.1 no 0.8 and uh, i'm just gonna write this simply to hello.exe very creative name style and hit enter and this should this should generate a freaking payload like i said stupid computer so we've got chess.exe, we've got hello.exe, we've got trouble.exe. Trouble.exe was written by me. These two are already made or pre-made with uh, Metasploitable. So uh, now what you guys want to do is go over here and start the listener. So we're going to use use exploit slash multi slash handler. What listener does is that it will listen for the reverse connection that we would get. And somebody is texting me in the middle of my tutorial. Stop doing that. Okay, so what uh, listen does is that it will listen for a particular connection if the payload is installed on the remote host. So we're going to set our payload and I hope you guys are not getting any static because the mic is rubbing up against my shoulder and not in a good way. <laughs> so we're going to use Windows slash Meta. Oh God, I really hate this autocomplete. I mean, what is the point of this if it's going to take this long? M R E P R E T E R. Wow, that sounds so unprofessional. Reverse TCP. And uh, yeah, that should work. Okay, nice. And now we're going to show options, and this will show you all the lists, all the things that we have to list before we actually start using it. So, this is the local port. This is the default port that we'll be listening to. So, I'm just going to hit set L host to 192.168.0.108. Okay, what is my IP address? God damn it. <laughs> okay, crap. I have to use 108. 108, and this should replace that payload that we made before. Come on, boy. All right. And hit enter. Now, what this is going to do is. Okay, we exploit this, and what the hell? Oh, ho, 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 shit. Set L host. Okay. I'm just going to show options. Hit enter. And we're going to change our L port. Because apparently it's already in use. We're going to use 1875. And see if that's available. And let's exploit this. Okay. So now what it has started to do is that it is listening for that particular what do you say a uh, payload to be installed and run on the windows host so uh if we open up our vmware we can just paste our or okay guys you guys must be thinking that uh Puxy, if we can get uh get an access to a computer to the point that we can install a software then why the hell do we need this payload i can just steal the data right away guys trust me in a real world environment you guys are gonna wanna have to use the payload generator you're gonna want to use the msf venom because uh, you're on the fly you're trying to target as many devices as possible to show that this is how vulnerable your uh, particular uh, what do you say organization or infrastructure is and msf venom is actually very useful for that because there are different operating systems there are creators who use freaking uh, macs and there are some people who are using company based companies android uh, so what you guys want to do is you guys really you need to use the uh, what do you say msf venom and generate payload uh, uh, the next thing is to get it installed you guys can always trust me i'm speaking from experience if you make a uh, an email uh, what do you say trustworthy enough you guys can get anybody to do anything for you i have made emails that are sarcastic quotation marks from hr that says that you have to install this particular software or you have to submit your particular report or you have to sign in into the server to view your report you to view your monthly report and people sign in with their default password and would install this uh, particular what do you say they will install a particular service or an exploit that I just sent them 
without even thinking twice. So trust me, a little bit of social engineering, a little bit of MSFNM, a little bit of smartness will get you a long way. So this is listening for our uh, reverse connection and I'm not gonna install and uh, exploit our Windows host. We're gonna do that in the next tutorial. And that is it for uh, today's video guys. I hope you liked it and I'm again very sorry. I'll be uploading every freaking day from now on. Like I say on every uh, video, thank you guys for your, all your love and support. If you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps us out a lot and really helps boost my morale to upload more videos. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of us and I swear to God, we upload every freaking day from now on. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll hope I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial in which what we're gonna do is get a persistence access on the service or a remote host, actually not a remote host, but our Windows machine. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to get a persistent access. So that's it for today's video guys. I'll hope I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial. See ya.